Hello and welcome to Talk Learn Connect Conversations with myself, Yvonne Redden. And today I have Ellen Gunning here and we're and she's the queen of PR, the founder of the Irish Academy of Public Relations. Thank you very much. I've been dying to do this for ages, Ellen. Thanks for joining me no, today. No, I've been looking forward to the chat. I'm just sorry we couldn't organise it sooner. Not at all. We're here now. Do you know, and like the first thing I think about Ellen is the, the name, even PR, I... Do you think like it, it could nearly be changed to SR, like social relations now? Couldn't it? Social relations think? is an interesting one. It's yeah. a term that exists still in all of the member bodies. Right. So I'm a member of the Public Relations Institute of Ireland, Public Relations Society of America, where the Irish Academy of Public Relations, it still exists as that term. But I think more broadly, mm. it's now referred to as communications rather than PR. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's become, I think, strategic communications. So it'll be the SR will be strategic rather than social in my book. Yeah, exactly. I think I, the challenge yeah, that yeah. people have is that there, there are so many avenues of communication. Mm. And it's trying to decide you can't be on all of them all of the time no. as a business. It's exhausting. So it's, yeah. Oh, completely. And it also, I don't think it shows a bang for your book. You don't get a return for your money. No, absolutely. So strategic in terms of who should you be talking to? Mm. What should you be saying to them? Mm. What platforms do they use? So I think, yeah, I might steal mm. your SR, but I call it strategic rather than. Yeah, strategic. I like that too. I like that. And it is, I think it's overwhelming being on everything. I like the idea. I mean, VA is, I mean, that's that's a new term as well and a, and a new career. I like, I think I like that idea of having a virtual assistant. To, well, I must admit, you probably know my other business is Metacoms. Yeah. And Metacoms is a data analytics platform which mm. looks at future communications trends, really. Yeah. But what it does, it looks at everything. So it looks yeah. at what will work look like in the future. Right. And um, what will our buying patterns be? How it's amazing. The likes of a virtual assistant, we're going to end up that really the value of, and this is me going off on a tangent. Now, no, no, it's fine. Really I like the this. Value, <laughs> the value of anybody coming out of university now is not what they know. Mm. It's the skills that they have and their ability to strategically apply them. Mm. Because into the future, if I employ somebody or if somebody employs me, they won't employ me because I can do something. They, there'll be a, a tool that will do it for you. Yeah. Basically, you'll be able to program something to do most of most of the things that are kind of people work, skills work now. Yeah. But what you'll never be, you'll be able to get assistance from AI, but you'll never be able to program a, a a platform to think with the kind of strategic value yeah. that a person has. Exactly. And I think that's where employment is going. It's in somebody, mm. it's not in the hours of the day that you work. It's in the value that somebody brings in terms of saying, I've looked at all of this, mm. but I think strategically, this is what we should be doing. And this mm -hmm. is why. Yeah. It's fascinating. The whole future. It is. I'd love to be cryogenically suspended when <laughs> I die. Right. And I want somebody if, if in a perfect world to bring me back in 50 year gaps for at least 200 years so that each time I can go, wow, wow look yeah. at what happened now. Quick yeah. update, oh, suspend me again, bring me back 50 years. I know. Now. Like it's just even with a vivid imagination, it's impossible yeah. to imagine really what the world would be like 50 years, oh, 100 years. Do you know what? And I lived in Australia, right? For I went in 1990s, I lived there for 10 years. And it was the 1990s. I came back early 2000 and I used to write letters to home because there was no email. I had to learn how to do email when it came out. I always wished I could have spoke to my mother or seen her on my camera, on my phone or Skype, you know, all the stuff that we have now. So for me, my older boy going off traveling, I'm actually OK if he goes because you'll have that communication that I never had. We used to I used to have to wait two weeks or something to get a letter from home. That was the only communication we had for a long time. But, you know, the big difference with Zoom when we had the lockdown with COVID, mm. um, I found like I'm always mooching about. Right. Yeah. So I'm I'm out and about. I'm at meetings. I'm doing talks. I'm I'm constantly interacting with people. I reckon I'd have gone mad if I hadn't had Zoom in the lockdown. Oh, now same. I would Zoom from mm. seven in the morning until ten o'clock at night because my business yeah. is international. Yeah. But the fact that I could see people, yeah. I'd have gone crazy if I was on a phone like this. Yeah. Just it talking was incredible. to a voice on the other end. But you actually felt you could. But you know the thing that we missed or that I missed particularly, I couldn't get into this virtual coffees, virtual evenings. out. This just didn't do it for me at all. I know. Right? It wasn't the same. Yeah. So I missed the, yeah. if I travel, 
I'll connect with people that I know in that area or people that I don't know. I'm yeah. a devil for going to new areas and saying, like you mentioned Australia. Yeah. When I spoke at Mumbrella Comscon in Sydney, I reached out to people I didn't know at all and said, you're in PR, so am I. Why don't we meet up while I'm over and we can have Brilliant. a cup of coffee and we can just talk about yeah. what's happening in PR in Australia, yeah. what's happening in PR in Ireland. You couldn't do that on Zoom. But no. you can but, do yeah. it. If you're yeah. traveling, because people yeah. will say, yeah, sure, I'll give you an hour or two. Yeah. Because everybody's curious about what's happening on the other side of the world. Exactly. Or what's happening in a different culture. Yeah. So that was the bit that I missed. But Zoom, I agree with you, but I miss letters. I had an aunt, my godmother, and Tony's mum and my father were all of that kind of 90 year age group. They've all died in the past year, year to mm. two years. But I used to write them letters. They were the only people who wrote letters to me and I wrote letters to them. Yeah. And I loved doing it. Yeah. I'd sit down and I'd feel like, okay, here's the brain dump. And in their case, yeah. I also got photographs printed because they wouldn't see anything on social media. So you the know. letter would have a whole stack of photographs in them and names on the back of it saying, this is uh, Eva Red, and she did Yeah, my mom used to do that as well. I found loads of stuff from her. She printed off. She had to learn how to do email as well. And that's how we we kept in touch yeah. with each other. And I found she's died. She died eight years ago of, of Alzheimer's. But she had she had printed off pictures of me over there in Australia. I've letters from her. She hand wrote, wrote them. And it's like the way she writes, the way she speaks. Your sister was here. And it, it's like it was like as if I was talking to it's her. It's like it being in the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But isn't it? We don't They're do that valuable. anymore. Because... I have them upstairs in a box. And if anyone touched them, that's what I would save if I had to save anything in my house. That's what you'd grab running out yeah. the door. But but those are the important. The email, I think, has once you've, you've got that same connection on email, yeah. you could sit down and do like a brain dump letter. The equivalent yeah. of a letter. <laughs> Haven't seen you in ages. Here's what's going on. Yeah. There's a, a friend of mine in Cork and we probably email each other maybe once every eight months to a year, something like that. But she says every time she sends in an email, I end up flagging it and then coming back that evening, sitting down with a cup of tea and going, right, what's she on about? And she does exactly the same. And it could take me two months to answer her back. But uh, I send her one of these brain yeah. dump emails yeah. and she literally come back with a thumbs up or something. And then the next one. But you kind of, you keep the connection. It's lovely. I love it. I love it. I look, I love the right side of communication anyway. But um, now I know we're going off on a tangent. <laughs> And I knew we would. I knew we would. <laughs> it was guaranteed. Of course. Tell everyone, like, what I'd love to know, where did your love of PR begin, Ellen? Oh, way back when. Mm. So I didn't even know what PR was yeah. when I left school. I had no idea. But my father was very involved in community things. Yeah. Um, so he was involved in the likes of the Vincent de Paul and the local residents association. So I naturally followed in his footsteps and joined most of those organizations with him. So I worked with them on each of those and some of them on my own. But everywhere, I don't know why, everywhere I, I started sort of volunteering, I'd end up on the committee and on the committee, somebody would say, oh, will you do PR? Yeah. And I go, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I don't mind doing that at all. Yeah. So you, looking back on it, I used to send letters <laughs> and like just I'd call them press releases and then say, hi, Yvonne. Uh, this is what we're doing now. Yeah. It's nothing to do with the press release at all. But I did it in total innocence and in really good faith for really um, really genuine organizations. And the media were great. They used to cover it for me all the time. And I'd get photographers down to cover stuff that we were doing. I'm from Rings End in the inner city. So if we were doing anything there, I'd contact the newspapers and say, we're having a fun run to raise money yeah. for charity, for cancer society or something. And they'd come down to cover it. And then you built saw, loads of connections, though, I suppose, too, didn't you? From there. Them, and, I, and I loved doing it. Yeah. I just got a great buzz out. Of it. And the buzz of actually um, in those days looking at the paper. So you'd pick up a paper and you go through it and go, yes, we got that piece next. And it, it was all about the papers, television yeah. or radio. because yeah. There was no social media because I'm going back 30 odd years now. Yeah. But the first course in PR um, was started by the Public Relations Institute around. I'm thinking around 19. 80s maybe 81 82 something like that and I thought that'd be great I'll study it to see what it's all about really only with the intention of being a better charity worker mm. or a better volunteer community volunteer and once I started studying it I was absolutely hooked mm. so at the end of the first year came and you were asked to do a proposal and they suggested that because we were students we should write the proposal for a company that knew us. So contact a company that you know, tell them what you're trying to do. They'll give you a brief, write the proposal and then send you to cost it and then send it in for the um, institute to evaluate. 
And I thought I've always had a great respect for my own time. I was given up two nights a week to study it and my money because I was paying mm. for it. Mm. I reckon a lot of people on the course are being paid for by companies, but I was yeah. paying for myself. Yeah. So I thought I'm not going to talk my way into a company who know me. So they won't break my heart. They'll never say this is rubbish, girl. I'll mm. talk my way into a company who don't know me. Mm. And with hindsight, I got the most wonderful man. He'd a face that never moved. <laughs> so it didn't matter whether you said to him, your wife has just given birth to your first child. <laughs> Or there's a little gurrier out there with a lump hammer working on your beamer. His face just was exactly the same. <laughs> uh-huh. Really? Uh-huh. But he, I got the the job with him of writing my proposals. And I said to him, look, I'll, I have to write these proposals anyway. Yeah. I'll give them to you. You can burn them. You can steal them and implement them. I don't mind. But I want a critical commercial analysis. That's that's my bang for the book. I want you to go through it and say, is this real world stuff or is it all theory? And when I came back and met with them, he ended up by saying, and are you prepared to implement them? And it was one of those moments where you go, this is, I, this, is this is what I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is going to be brilliant or this yeah. is going to be the dumbest move yeah. I ever made. And I said, yes, but I'm setting up at the moment. It'll be about six months. Mm. Um, it'll be about six weeks sorry before I can actually start to implement them you and found just, your niche didn't you I did and I yeah. love it yeah. and I'm a complete communications geek I know day. I know you are yeah I just I just love <laughs> yeah. it like I watch people on television and go now why would they use that form of words or why would they stand there when they were given that interview or why the heck do they choose to give an interview at all yeah. or you look at things on social media and think oh engage your brain first yeah like this is going to be around forever so I, i'm a geek but a happy yeah. comms geek and do you that's think that's how i get into pr yeah and look and i mean obviously it's escalated since then now you're training people as well which is is that's your expertise have you seen a difference in the way people do pr though like even pre covid and post covid do you see any oh. kind of difference PR has changed massively, yeah. right? The only PR that I now do is crisis PR. Okay. So it's, it's, the, it's the only thing that happens. And they joke with me in the office that I literally end up saying, oh, my people need me. Crisis, clear the decks. I won't be around for three days. But if you look <laughs> at crisis as an example, right? Yeah. I went into PR. You had probably two days to get a handle on a crisis. Somebody would say, this is what's happened. And you're time to sit down and say, explain it to me and tell me how the company works and what was the product and... And you'd really get your head into it. And then you'd you'd almost say, OK, now we face the media and tell them what the story is. And everybody moved at that pace. That was moving fast, but everybody mm. moved at that pace. And now you've got a couple of hours at most. Yeah. The, the last crisis I was brought in on, I spent two hours actually with six six men sitting around a table saying to them, no, go back and explain to me exactly how that happened. Treat me like an idiot because I'm the one who's going to put the strategy in place and it's my reputation on the line. So convince me that you were you were true and honest in everything you did yeah. and I'll go out and fight for you. But I, yeah. I need to know. And yeah. it took a good two and a half hours. And at the end of it all, one of the men turned around and said, that's the clearest understanding I've ever had of how we run our business. Yeah. And what we do. Yeah. And it was just um, from then on, it was OK, so now we're firefighting. Now yeah. we need to get your media trained. Now we need to get a statement out. And it just it moves so fast. Yeah. yeah. And, and so I suppose that the control that you haven't got anymore is that years ago, somebody did the equivalent of phoned a reporter and said, this is what has happened. Yeah. And now you get somebody picks up their phone and goes and posts it to social media. Exactly. Have a crisis. Yeah. You can see it happening in front of you. So it's changed massively. I but always think, of, of, you know, the term citizen journalist, you know, the, everybody's a journalist. And I mean, that's, that's difficult for a writer or a journalist like myself trying to get your stuff in the papers because it's it's nearly you have to come up with like a super pitch that blows them away. Like you can't just do normal, you know, pitches anymore. It's like something has to be. It's nearly a dr dramatic pitch you have to send in to get attention because everybody but the problem, mm. but the problem with your citizen journalist is that people post what they see, which is fine, but they also apply their own belief to it. Yeah. Now, you know, as a journalist, you, stay you have to be agnostic. Yeah. yeah. So you say, this is what happened. This is yeah. what the company says. This is what somebody else says. So you're always trying to get that balance yeah. and let the reader or the viewer or the listener yeah. decide for themselves. Yes. And yeah. The problem with citizen journalists, as I see mm. it, is that there isn't enough cross-checking. I love the idea that somebody picks something up and says, oh, my God, look at this. Isn't yeah. this amazing? And sends it to a newspaper or wherever. 
But I'm not sure there's enough cross-checking to say, can we just get a second opinion on yeah. that? Is that the way it happened? Mm. Is that a true reflection? Yeah. So I, I think mm, yeah. the jury is still out on it. It has its values. Yes. But I, I think the bit that's being that we're missing is that very thorough cross-checking that used to happen, that mm. still happens in established journalism, Yeah. but doesn't happen so much online now because everything moves so fast. Mm. And I think we're in danger of questioning less. And I'm very much in favour of questioning more. Big time, yeah. I think, you're, I mean, I suppose your background will, will speak for itself as well. If people, if you're presented in pictures, I mean, the first thing I look at is somebody's website. You know, it's the first thing you look at. So yeah. that's not being checked. And I can't emphasize enough to people I work with how important it is to have a website, Ellen. Well, what, like, it's out crucially of all, important. What, exactly. I can't get it through to some people. Out of all platforms, which one do you think is most valuable? I would actually go for LinkedIn first and a website. Thank second. you. I do as well. Yeah. But LinkedIn, I it's my personal choice. Yeah. Like we have all of the platforms for the business. Yeah. But me personally, I use LinkedIn because it's real people. Yeah. So I, I can see you. I know something about you. I know when you've changed jobs or when you've yeah. added a skill that I want to talk to you about. And I just I feel I get to know you. Mm. Um, and it's really you you get, I think, on, on LinkedIn or on your website. I know we were looking at our website recently and we were saying, my God, like the volume of information that's on it, just because we're around so long. Yeah. Just scrolling down all of the videos on our YouTube page says, yeah, they've been around a long time. They must know what they're doing. Mm. Or looking at all of the blogs, you go like, how many? Going back to who? And it, I think yeah. it, it speaks volumes. I think something like that actually says more about you. It positions you. And I it says so. you have been around. You do know what you're at. Yeah. Uh, you, you're at least worth listening to. Yeah. They may not take your advice, but you're at least worth listening to. And I think the, the website and the LinkedIn are the two most crucial pieces mm. for any organization or any individual. Because yeah. it's your personal brand. Exactly. My biggest compliment from people would be, I love your website. Um, well done. It looks great. You know, I think because I put a lot of work into it. And I think it'll show if you do, because I update it quite a lot. I change the banners. I do it all myself. It's nearly well a job. You. It's, it's, it's a job. And the LinkedIn as well. That took me nearly two years to get right as well. LinkedIn is, is a powerful platform, I think, isn't it? It really I is. I think it's brilliant for yeah. actually communicating with people. Yeah, and networking not, and connecting. Not for yeah. selling, for yes. connecting, yeah. for networking. For And people are very generous on LinkedIn. Mm. Yeah, like I know. Time. I never mind if it, somebody connects to me and then says, by the way, you know, I'm coming to Dublin. Can you give me advice on? I go, yeah, of course. Yeah. Or do you happen to know whatever? And people are very good. Like I've reached out to people and said, I'm heading to Australia. I don't know anybody in Sydney. Who should I be talking to? Oh, yeah. you should talk to this person. I'll introduce you. Yeah. Uh, I leave link like. LinkedIn is very generous for that. You and don't I, get that I on other platforms. I don't see that on other platforms. No, yeah, I don't I see do. it at all. They all have their individual value, don't they? I mean, Twitter, they I do. do like Twitter. I mean, I'm on them all. You have to be. Twitter is great for information and getting in front yeah. of the journal requests and seeing what people are looking for, all that. But And then the influencer marketing, we'll touch on that a little bit. That's huge as well, isn't it? It's enormous. It's what? just unbelievable. People, the people who get it right are incredible, aren't they? They're amazing and they yeah. have huge followings. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing with the influencer marketing was if you looked at it pre-COVID and post-COVID or pre-COVID yeah. and during COVID, influencers lost all their influence when COVID happened. It was really interesting to watch the statistics. People who had had huge followings suddenly were getting these comments with others saying they're out of touch because the world was in a really scared place. So nobody knew how diff how dangerous was this Yeah. Um, virus that we were all likely to get and it could kill us and there was a huge change and people suddenly yeah. stopped paying attention to influencers and saying I, my life I, there are too many other things important in my life that I don't yeah. need to know and I think in a lot of ways it shook up the influencers as well yeah um, and took them out of that bit of a bubble that they were living in and um, humanized and themselves it, they became more human and I think when that's Paltrow, they, I remember yeah. got a huge backlash at the start of COVID yeah. because she posted something about I don't know a fabulous pair of shoes for a thousand dollars or something like that and the backlash was does she realize that there's a virus out there killing people yeah um, it didn't she, matter she yeah she learned from it and she's right back where she was before I, I think with influencer marketing people have made an entire career out of it yeah. um, and I think it is a career that will last from a communications point of view, I'm still challenged by that link between genuine recommendations and advertising or paid sponsorship. 
Yeah. Um, I'm not at all convinced that it's still as clear as it should be. But and we I do think, get discounts. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, I, I don't mind if you look at somebody and they say this post was sponsored. Yeah. So, yes. X cosmetic company or whoever yeah. sponsored this it's post. It's more transparent. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. I know you're earning your living from it. But I also know that you're probably saying very nice things about it as opposed to saying, very nasty things about it. Yeah. So I think we need, I remember talking to a colleague about this well before COVID and she said, what you need is an understanding with the people who follow you. Mm. And you need an understanding that says something like, um, and I'm putting this very baldly, if people want me to want to pay me sponsorship or want to pay me advertising, then that's how I earn my living and I'll take that money. Yeah. But you need to understand that if I post a review, you've got to read the review and see, you've got to read the review for the nuance. Mm. But I don't think people do. Mm. So if if I read a, a nuanced piece and it says, you know, I've, I've reviewed, I don't know, this this lipstick. It was an interesting lipstick. I'm out of my depth here entirely. But but you read it and you go, Inter- who says a lipstick is interesting? <laughs> and you begin to think maybe it wasn't all that great lipstick or somebody else says this was amazing. And I got six hours out of it. But it's in how you read it. And I think that it's partly the transparency. So there's an issue around mm. advertising slash sponsorship. Mm. There's definitely an ethical issue. And the ethical issue is about having respect for the people who follow you mm. um, and actually making sure that they understand when you're you're reviewing something because you really do believe in it. Yeah. Uh, I know from a, a speaking to a colleague in PR, they spent a lot of time working with one influencer and getting this influencer to actually endorse their product, the company's product, the client that they were dealing with. And they, they spent a lot of time saying, so this is how good the product is. This is what it does. And they felt they'd really got a good relationship with the influencer. And the, the sponsorship lasted for, I think it was about three months. And in month four, the influencer was promoting their competitor's product. See, there's no... And they felt really yeah. scalded by it. Yeah. And, it's, and that's not treating your followers no. with respect. No. So I, I think there are still issues around it, but I think it's a career that will be here for a long time. There's no loyalty. We, we, need, we need loyalty. We need yeah. respect. We yeah. need transparency. Mm. We, need, we need ethics. We, a bit we more realism. Yeah. Yeah. A bit more realism. Yeah. And is there anyone there that's out doing stuff that you admire that you, I mean, that, is there a couple of people that you kind of like what they're doing at the minute or? I actually, I don't follow influencers. This is an awful thing to say. I don't follow. Not even influencers, right? people uh, online, maybe, maybe oh, people. I tell you who I love keeping an eye on. Right. Mm. So, and this is, this is my magpie brain, Yvonne. Okay. <laughs> so you, welcome to my world. So the likes of Andrew Grill. He's right. the actionable futurist because he looks at where is technology going. And this is your geekism do. coming out now, isn't it? This Alan? is my geekism <laughs> coming out. It is. So like, where is the future going? What What are we likely to see? Or core, one core. And um, the advertising agency become much more than an advertising agency now, but they do a monthly consumer mindset. So mm. what are people thinking? Where are they at? That They're fascinating. Yeah. Susan Hayes Cullerton, uh, the positive economist because I, her insights are always worth listening to. Yeah. Um, Lucinda Creighton. Yeah. Who is a former politician. Yeah. But her insights into politics. I mean, I would pay to listen to that woman on European politics, international politics. She just, she cuts through in a fascinating way. Yeah. Um, so literally, uh, that's mm. probably a mix of PR yeah. and politics. Yeah, a mixture. And listen, I think. And tech, it's, it's, which is probably where mostly my world yeah. is. Yeah. Because yeah. it is, it's all about the customer experience now, isn't it? That word comes up is. everywhere, yeah. isn't it? And yeah. it's, they want an experience. And it's true, you do. And I think you see that a lot on Instagram with the reels. And I mean, all that, is that all real as well? I don't know. The in- Instagram is another platform. But the customer experience is a really interesting one. When I yeah. formed Metacoms, it was because if you look at the way people buy now, right? Yeah. People used to buy brands because it was Gucci. Mm. Now they buy brands because of what they do for the environment. It's, mm. it's much more sustainability. And, and yeah. Even when you buy a cup of coffee, you buy a cup of coffee because it's sustainably grown by women farmers who get a fair price. Yeah. You're investing your four euros or your five euros and something. Yeah. So the world has changed massively in terms of how consumers behave. So mm. we expect that brands and companies will care more. And mm. we move our money very quickly. So it's, it's consumer behavior 
The big difference that social media has made is that if years ago you were dissatisfied with something, you could kind of write a letter to the papers or maybe phone Joe Duffy. Yeah. <laughs> but that was about the limit of it. Yeah. Now you can pop something up on social media and say. And it goes viral. I believed yeah. this company was mm. actually into sustainability. They're not. Mm. Look at this and look at that. They don't walk the walk. Yeah. And what happens is that you take it's not just you who gets upset now. You take hundreds and thousands of other people who read your post and say, I didn't realize that. Yeah, that's horrific. I'm supporting them for that reason. And they move. So I think the move for companies is companies have to be careful, too. Don't much they? more real, mm. yeah, much more real and much more conscious of not so much even um, being ethical in the way that they behave, because most companies are and try to be, uh, but actually looking at where's their consumer going. So there's not much point in me telling you that like my personal choice always for my businesses would be gender equality or gender equity. Right. I'm just I'm big into treating everybody with respect, cultural yeah. diversity, yeah. gender equity. That would be my area. Mm. But there's not much point if I was a commercial company like selling a product, there wouldn't be much point in me promoting that if all of the research showed that actually my consumers are into biodiversity. Yeah. So or it's a lot about packaging. customer discovery, isn't it? You have to it find is. out where your customers and who they are. Yeah. And actually reflect their issue because you, the, yeah. the old story is true. It costs much more to gain a new customer mm. than it does to keep a customer. Yeah. But I won't keep you if I go off on a tangent of something that I believe yeah. is a great thing to do. And it may be that it's a hard lesson for companies to learn because the company may well say to you, but look, we're into using water more sustainably we're into sustainable packaging we do all of that you say yeah that's fine that's kind of what everybody expects you to do yeah now look at where's your consumer where does your consumer expect you to be invested in? yeah yeah and add that to it because yeah. you, you does i think that the the tide is lifting all boats that we have a well, higher the training yeah, and the training has to change for the companies training their employees you know and like i suppose for any new business or somebody who's stuck at the minute and they're just not sure what way to go what is there any little tips that you would give somebody listening to this or watching this to look at to if they if things weren't working or like a new sme starting off what would be a couple of tips I, I suppose one is always to be honest. Yeah. Um, which most people, when they, the old fashioned idea of PR was always that it was spin. And spin was always thought of as, you know, selling somebody a rotten egg and telling them it was fresh. Yeah. I actually think of spin as telling somebody, don't look there, look there. It's just, you know, I want to distract you a little bit. I'm not telling you a lie. I'm just distracting you. But I think you can't lie. You, you can't be fake. Mm. I remember a good few years ago, there was a obviously a very small company that we were dealing with. They were they were pitching to us to do our advertising at the time. And I'd spoken to the guy and he told me where he was based. And he said he had this fourth floor in this building. And I thought, no, he hasn't, because our videographer works from that fourth floor. <laughs> so I rang the videographer and said, what's the story? Is this guy, are you subletting? And he said, oh, yeah, I've sublet a few offices. And I said, oh, fair enough, because this guy told me he had the floor. And he said, oh, no, he left a few months back. Um, obviously, times were tight. He couldn't afford. Now, I yeah. no problem at all with this guy being an individual who was working from home who would do a good job for me. But I didn't work with him because I thought mm, he's trying to convince. I me know. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes me nervous because yeah. I'm not sure he'll tell me the truth about anything. Yeah, else. exactly. So. I think the key rule is be honest. And if people can't take you as the honest you, well, then they're probably not, they're the not right your clients. You anyway. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. You I find your second community. Thing, yeah. You find your community. The, the second thing is when you find your community, find what works for them. Don't mm. force your solution on them. So I love yeah. LinkedIn, but we have all platforms because yeah. if you look at the community that we work with, so all of the people that we train have very different needs. So we've got like corporate companies will come in and they're looking for somebody who will train four or five of their teams or one of their key people in yeah. media. And we've got a Facebook community who will come in and say, I just want to upskill in that. I'd love to do a day learning how to make a, a good public speech. 
Yeah. So I do a day. It's a totally different. Or you've yeah. got TikTok. They're, they're oh. still trying to get me onto TikTok, right? I haven't. So I, I haven't been there either, Ellen. I, have I to, haven't been there yet. I have to uh, go but, there though. Book talk is I, huge. Yeah. Well, I tell you, they they kept uh, the thing that convinced me that we should do it, and I just I I hate starting something and not running through with it. Okay. And I just don't have the time have, to give it a good time. run at the yeah. moment. Yeah. But I loved Richard Grogan. You know the solicitor. Oh, I know. Died recently. So sad. Yeah. He was just he was brilliant. brilliant. Like, what that's was a law and that's a fact. I mean, and that that's was the it. law and that's a that's fact. A fact. And, yeah. and you actually listened to it and went, and that's the no BS version yeah. of he was these great. are your rights and this is what you're entitled to. He was brilliant. He did and it well. And I'd love to do the same thing for communications. Like, yeah. this is how you, this yeah. is telling the truth. This is good communications. This is bad. That's yeah. a fact. Yeah. Look, and the awful thing is, or the surprising thing is, people can look at how people communicate and go, that was awful. Yeah, but they seem reluctant to call it out, and you mm. think I don't know why, because mm. it's it's not. I suppose you can call it out and bitch about something, and that wouldn't be my plan ever. But you yeah. can call something out and say, and this is why it was wrong, and this is how it should have been done. I I give you a recent example. Um, Kelly Harrington. I've just mm. uh, done a blog on her, and the interview she did on Off the Ball, and the spar. I don't know if you're familiar with it. So she did an interview on Off the Ball. It was she was there because she's an ambassador for Spar. They're 60 years old. They have some big 60 year um, promotion. And the journalist who was interviewing her asked her about a post that she posted, which she had deleted. Yeah. From Twitter. Oh, yes. Sometime last year. Yeah. And I, I wasn't aware of it because I don't do sports at all. Yeah. But somebody told me about it and I went in and I had a look at it and I thought it was a really good example of how everybody got it wrong. Mm. The journalist didn't ask, in my opinion, didn't ask the question properly because he said, well, you posted this post and it was about immigrants coming into the country. And do you still stand over that or something like that? And I thought, what post? What did she say about immigrants? If you're going to ask the question, at least give me, tell me that you think it was a disgraceful thing that she posted or yeah. help me to see where the question's coming yeah. from. And then when she answered it, she said, but that was last year and mm. I deleted it or something and I've moved on. I thought, no, that doesn't answer it. Yeah. There's an issue to be, the issue is either that you stand over what Address you posted it. or you, you foolishly posted it, you regretted it and you took it down. Yeah. Call it out and move on. Yeah. But he ended up asking her the question a number of times afterwards, trying to get yeah. an answer from him. And the PR person then interjected and said, you know, we're here for Spar, move on. And I thought, no, you, you may have pitched Spar as the reason for but the But it's interview. turned, the conversation has changed. Yeah. But you actually, you agreed to give an interview and it's like me chatting to you today. I can't set the boundaries for what I've agreed to chat to you. Yeah. But it's your interview. So you ask me whatever you like. Yeah. Like we've an understanding that it'll be about public relations, but you yeah. go off on something else, which and is it what has. we did. <laughs> yeah. We, we started by going off on a tangent. For My God's questions sake. are here. I think I touched on one. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the nature of a good that, interview. And I love that. It's more natural and, and organic, isn't it? Like that. It's better. It is. And I thought the PR person got it wrong by saying this is what we agreed because it's not what yeah. you agree. An interview yeah. is exactly what we're doing it's an exchange of thoughts and ideas and yeah it's a conversation yeah that's what it should be that's what makes it interesting to people to watch and to listen to you don't want it structured you know I used to be script I used to script everything um Ellen then I and I, I'd be like this constantly and I said no I have to stop I like it just to flow and see what happens do you know and if it's a topic you love that's easy to do it's isn't it? very easy to flow yeah. I yeah. found years ago I did the radio show Mediascope for like 15 yeah. years I think and I like you, I started by scripting every single question. So I had it in front of me. And then I yeah. thought, no, actually, what I wanted, I just want bullet points. Yeah, exactly. Because if we get yeah. a chance, because I think they've really got something to say on this and this and this. That's good. Just to remind but, you, just to, yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, and I meant to ask you because yeah. you did something. But very often you wouldn't get to it because like that, you'd be so fascinated by the by person you're stuff. talking to. I know. And you've got such an interest in what they have to say. Yeah. So you... You think of questions as you go along. It's like, oh, oh there's I wonder another. About this then. But that's a good exactly. tip, though, as well. You know, write bullet points. Have bullet points beside you for interviews. I mean, that's a great tip, actually. To oh, I tell you, well. three bullet points. If you're doing three, an interview yeah. as a client, I would advise three bullet points because there are three. You should give an interview, which I'm not doing today, but you should give an interview with three things in mind. There are three things that you want the interviewer to know. There's a reason why you're giving the interview. Yeah. So it might be what the name of your company is, and it mm. might be that. You have a, 
you're speaking at a conference or whatever. But those three th- people generally can't remember more than three things. Now, Yvonne, the challenge is which three things are they going to remember? I know. I, I was, and you know what? While you're talking to me, I'm thinking of your TikTok already. And I and I know what your tagline is going to be. Tell don't, me. Don't story uh, sell, story tell. You know, something like that. I love that because I something regularly like that say is what your tagline is. is. Public relations is telling and advertising is selling. There you go. So Write don't it down. story sell, story tell. Thank you. I'll steal that with pride. <laughs> you can put my credit to Yvonne Redden at the end of TikTok. <laughs> Perfect. There was a colleague of mine years ago when somebody said to her, I've come across that before. Did you pinch that from somewhere? And she said, darling, we're in public relations. We don't pinch. We steal with pride. And what she meant was exactly that. Yvonne Redden gave me this this quote to finish with and I use it all the time now and it's because <laughs> I, I always I loved went. yeah I loved that when you said that last year at the event in a uh, Leopardstown race it was brilliant wasn't it we're going to run out of time I Ellen. Loved, I'm I loved that event I loved that was a brilliant event where can people find you what's your website irishacademy.com if you Couldn't want any easier. training it's mostly training and public speaking that your main business areas are now, isn't it? It is. Yeah. We train in anything to do with public relations. So anything to do with communications, yeah. public relations, journalism, social media, content creation, everything, public speaking, <laughs> media yeah. interviews. Yeah. If it comes under communications, okay. we do it. Brilliant. And that's, and the website is irishacademy.com. Perfect. Thank you. And I'm going to, oh, we're running out of time. I amazing. loved the chat. Uh, Thanks brilliant. so much. Send it on to me and we'll, I'll yeah. have my social media happy people um, share and spread the good news. Let's finish with the tagline again. What is it? <laughs> story tell, don't story sell. Compliments of the wonderful Yvonne Redden. And Soon Ellen Gunning. to be <laughs> Ellen Gunning's strapline. <laughs> For TikTok. <laughs> Thanks, Ellen. Take care. Thanks so much, Yvonne. All the best. Bye-bye. Thank you.